20 years ago, there was a poker player who was struggling to make ends meet, and every night after work, he would jump on the computer and play poker tournaments all night long, trying to win it big. One night, he signed up for a satellite tournament to get into a $10,000 main event in Las Vegas, and to his surprise, he won a seat. After traveling to Vegas in the summer and being completely outclassed by his opponents, he overcame all the odds and won the main event for $2.5 million. This player's name is Chris Moneymaker, and he is iconic, responsible for the biggest poker boom in history. Hundreds of thousands of non-professional players saw Chris win millions of dollars, and it motivated them to try to play poker themselves. If it wasn't for Chris Moneymaker, who knows what this game would be like today. You may be thinking to yourself, Lex, why are you telling me this cool story? Well, Chris himself is down here in Florida at Daytona Beach for the Moneymaker Tour. I got a call that there is a seat open for a 5-5 livestream game, and I drove up here to play. I grabbed $5,000 worth of chips. I buy in for $3,000 and take seat number two, ironically, right next to Chris Moneymaker himself. This is a fun video with some huge pots. Let's get started. This turned out to be a very splashy game. There's a couple calls for $5. I don't really pick up anything playable until I get King 3 suited in Under the Gun Plus 2. Gotta make things happen here. So I raised a $75 back over to the small blind who calls, big blind calls, and we go three ways in position to 793 with one heart. Bottom pair, small blind leads out now for 175. Once the big blind calls, I feel like we're deep enough here to peel. Could turn some equity with a flush draw. Could turn a bigger pair to the board. Could turn trips. So I call as well, and we do hit some of those outs with a king on the turn, giving me two pair. Small blind now slows down in checks. Big blind checks. Now, when you call in the flop with bottom pair, hit two pair on the turn, a bet is definitely necessary. I don't want to bet too big, still want to get called by straight draws here, maybe 9x hand. There isn't a flush draw, so I don't have to be too scared. I just bet around half the size of the pot, 325. Small blind gets out of the way, but Will comes along with a call with his straight draw going here to the river, 1.4k in the middle to another king nice kings full of threes a full house for us this is what you would call runner runner perfect perfect our hand couldn't get any better here i'm expecting my opponent to check and i think i'm gonna bet big here hoping he has a hand like ace nine queen nine he needs unbelieving since two kings are on the board i'll probably bet over the size of the pot but that doesn't happen when will decides to lead out now for a $475 bet. This is super strong. He check called the flop, check called the turn, and now leads into me on this board pairing river. Could he have a hand like king seven, king nine, pocket sevens, pocket nines, pocket threes? All those hands beat me. He really shouldn't have a king here very often. Feel like my options are call and play it safe or go for the max and go all in. And I feel like with 2.4k left, we're just going to have to go for it, and I jam it all in there. There's always that first 2 to 3 seconds when you jam all in that you're just praying you don't get snap called by a better hand. So once he doesn't do that, I know I have the winner. We're obviously hoping for a call now. Obviously with Will's hand, he's got 6 high. Don't think he can make the call. Eventually, he folds, and we win our first pot here at Daytona Beach. This game was scheduled for a 5-5, but there was a ton of straddle and re-straddle, which is fine for me. It bumps up the stakes of the game. Chris double straddles to $20 here. There's a couple calls for 20. I look down at Ace King of Diamonds and raise to 150. I just get one call from Shane, who, from what I've seen so far, has played every single hand he's been dealt in. He hasn't seen any two cards he doesn't like. We go heads up here out of position to queen, queen, six, rainbow. I check, and he checks back. Turn card nine of clubs, I check again. Now he fires out a bet of $200. I'm beating a ton of straight draws and flush draws that he could possibly have. So I call here with ace high. Going to the river, which is the jack of clubs, I check again. Bad card for me, flush draws, straight draws, pairs get there. And now he fires out $400. I think about this for a little bit of time, thinking of the hands that maybe I'm beating. I am beating 7-8 for a busted straight draw, beating ace-10, 
beating ace five, ace four. The reason I'm thinking for so long is because this bet size is pretty polarized. He's saying he's got a full house or a flush. Don't think he's betting a jack for this sizing, a nine for this sizing. Probably not even betting a straight for this sizing either. So I think about hero calling, but just can't beat that many hands. Even some hands he's turning into bluffs. I'm losing two, so I fold. And Shane takes this one down with the queen jack offsuit for a full house on the river. Finally, after about an hour into the stream, I get my shot to play against the champ himself. It folds to me, I raise ace jack to 75. Chris is in the $20 straddle and bumps it to 275 with the smallest pair you can get, pocket deuces. I make the call, we go heads up out of position to 964 rainbow. I check to him, he bets 275. Ace high could be good here some of the time, but I feel like this is a board that could be connecting with me a lot more than him. So I decide to call thinking I could potentially bluff later on. And when the turn card pairs the top card with a nine, I feel like this is a really good card I could potentially bluff on. I contemplate leading out here and then betting huge on the river, but I decide to check and Chris goes with a smaller size bet of $400. In this situation, I feel like he mostly just has a pocket pair. He did three bet preflop, probably has something like pocket sevens through pocket aces. Not sure if he's going to be folding those hands versus the sizing. A size probably no good anymore, so I reluctantly fold. And he did have the best hand, pocket deuces. I wonder what would have happened if we would have let out there on the turn and bet big on the river. We'll never know. Either way, the champ takes this one down with the ducks. A very interesting hand develops up next. As you can see, I'm away from the table. I've posted my small blind and I've stepped back about six or seven feet so that I can text on my phone. No phones allowed on the live stream table. As the cards are dealt out, there's a straddle by Shane. There's a call by Will. Then there's a raise to $50 in the cutoff by Thomas before I'm back at the table and peel back pocket aces. I then hear Will from across the table say his hand is dead. I just laugh it off and raise to $200. Then in his whiny voice he says, no, his hand's dead. He wasn't at the table when the cards were dealt. I think he's joking considering everyone's joking and laughing at this table until the floor gets called over. I then look at him and say, are you serious, dude? You want to kill my hand? I was five feet away from the table. I thought you were kidding. He says, no, I'm being serious. You weren't at the seat when your cards were dealt. Bro, this is a fucking private live stream game. What are you talking about? Of course my hand's not dead. I have no idea what the hell this guy's problem was. Uh, kind of tilted from this whole interaction. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what he was trying to do. I've never seen this before in a public or a private live stream game. Very weird, but I end up getting two callers. One from Shane, the loose cannon, and one from Thomas. Three ways to an ace-high board, flopping top set, but... It's a pretty wet and connected flop. I decide to down bet here to 150 and get snap raised by Shane to $500. I'm thinking to myself, how do I want to play this hand facing a $500 raise? As you can see, it's a crazy action flop. I've got top set, Thomas with two pair. Shane's got the nut straight with the king high royal draw. I've named Shane as a loose cannon because he's been playing every single hand. He's been winning big pots. He hasn't got to showdown as often, so I'm not sure if he's just bluffing a lot or if he's just running super good. I guess against a player like him with top set, I'm just going to call down. Not going to be folding my hand, so I put in a chip for $500. Turn 8 of spades doesn't improve us. I check over to Shane, who instantly jams all in over $2,000. I snap call his bet. Like I said, not folding top set to this guy. He asks me if I want to run it once or twice. I tell him it's up to him. He then tells me it's up to me. So I say, all right, one time. Let's do this. As you can see, I am behind here. He's got a straight with the king of diamonds as well. I only have a couple outs left in the deck. One time for Max Payne, over $6,000 in the middle. Will we get lucky or will we get stacked? Oh, boy. Wow. Well, well we don't have a dump button for that, and Tom would have made a boat as well. Wow, wow. yeah. Tom would have made tens full. What a spot. What a spot indeed. 10 on the river. Max Payne, one time for a full house for us. A sick flop turn in river, profiting over $3,400 in this hand. Sometimes in poker, you're going to get your money in bad and you're going to lose. Sometimes you're going to get your money in good and you're going to suck out and win a huge pot. Good thing my hand wasn't dead, right, Will? 
Feels good to win this one. Huge profit. Come from behind on a live stream. Now we have over a $6,000 stack. Still riding the high from that ace is full. Wow, what a sick one that was. It's going to be hard to top that one. There's a straddle on the button for $20. Small blind calls 20. Nicole calls 20. I bump it to 125 with ace jack offsuit. Only Will makes the call on the small blind. We see a flop of jack, 10, deuce, all hearts. On this monotone board, top pair, top kicker, I bet $50, and Will makes the call. Turn pairs the board, he checks. I bet around the size of the pot, $400, and he snap calls my bet. I put him on a jack or a 10, maybe an ace I flush draw hand, so when the river card's a four of diamonds, and he checks over to me, I decide to bet a sizing that hopefully he can call with all of his pairs. I make it 550 bucks. Back over to the small blind, he's facing a triple bet by me on a board where I'm probably not going to be bluffing with a sizing that seems pretty value. I think it's time to let go of your second pair, buddy. However, Will just likes to give me money. I knew he was bad at poker, but after seeing this call, I realized that he's very bad at poker. He puts in the chips for 550 with second pair. Ace Jack is good. Getting paid off here, a little bit more of Will's chips being pushed in our direction. And adding to our stack, up over $3,000 now on the day. I was happier after this hand than I was hitting aces full on the river only because I took the chips from the clown in seat 7. You may be thinking, I'm a little harsh on this guy, but I feel like it's very well deserved after that ridiculous stunt of Will trying to get my hand called dead in the small blind when I was 5 feet away from the table. Felt like once he did that, all poker etiquette was out the window so I don't feel bad making him look like an idiot on my YouTube channel. Either way, this table was very fun to play with. Everyone was super friendly, except maybe one guy. Everyone was very talkative. The table was really fun. I had a really good time playing, and I had a really good time taking Will's money as well. All right, enough with the roasting. Back to the poker. Shane raises the $75 without seeing his cards. He's completely blind in this hand. I've got ace-queen offsuit. This is a slam dunk re-raise. I make it $250. Back over now to Chris on the button who looks down at kings and announces raise before putting any chips out there. Old school style. He then throws out $600. Six black chips. Shane folds. Action back over on me. This is a pretty strong line by Mr. Moneymaker. I feel like our options in this situation are to fold or to re-raise again as a bluff. feel like calling out of position with ace-queen offsuit isn't the best option, and ultimately I decide to fold, look for a better spot, don't really want to go heads up out of position in a 4-bet pot against a champ with this hand, could be dominated, and it turns out we were up against pocket kings. Nice hand, Chris. This now leads us into the last hand of the night. I've got ace four suited and raised to $40. Small blind calls. Will in the big blind hates money and calls. Thomas calls four ways to queen three four one spade. When it checks to me, I decide to C bet my second pair for $100. Small blind calls and under the gun calls. Three ways now to the 10 of clubs on the turn. If it checks to me, I'm going to check this one back. But Shane decides to lead out now for a $155 bet. Surprisingly, Thomas gets rid of his top pair and versus this wild, loose cannon. Not gonna fold a pair, so I make the call. River card's good for us with the Ace of Hearts, now giving me two pair, and Shane snap leads out for a $325 bet. I consider just calling given this line. It is super strong. He could have a set here, could have deuce five for a straight. Could have King Jack, but that seems very unlikely. But he could also have a lot of worse two pairs as well. Could have a hand like Ace-5, Queen-4, Queen-3, Queen-10, 10-4. You guys get the idea. I think I can raise for value, so I may get $1,400. Shane Snap folds, and we win our very last hand here at Daytona Beach Racing and Card Club on the live stream. They then tell us actually we're going to play one more hand on the night and it ends up being a pretty crazy one where Rico is all in with ace jack offsuit, Will is all in for $500 with a six offsuit and Chris Moneymaker calls it off here with 4-5 which is the same hand that he won the 2003 main event with. Maybe it's destiny, who knows? We're going to see the run out here, live action table footage for you guys of this last hand of the night. 
Once. Once it is. Let's go. Peel the band-aid off. Well, I like to turn them over so we can be yes. the rest of the table can partake. No, I don't like to turn over either. My money's on the ace of spades, the signature card. Because Come it's on, a signature please. card. Spade, spade. Here it comes. Chris has pocket sevens. Really fun. Oh, you do sorry. not have Seven pockets. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The money maker. Yeah. Hey, strikes again. Wow. Oh my you guys got some god. good hands for the stream. There were some pretty good hands for the stream. Great plan there, everybody. Yeah. Nice you guys, thank you. Great hands. Too good. Chris takes this one down with a straight on the river. Like they say, better to be lucky than good. Chris, you probably know them, bro. Right? Little video. You don't have to say anything. Oh, hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to just destroy this. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for playing. Thank you. All right, guys, that is it for this one. I'm back at my hotel now. I had a long day, drove three hours up here from Fort Lauderdale, played four hours on a live stream, ran well. Things went my way, ended up profiting $3,600 plus. The most notable hand of the night, Pocket Aces, top set, getting it all in against the straight. We run it one time for Max Payne, and I hit the full house on the river to profit huge. The game was good. The action was good. I ran well. Didn't get cooler, no bad beats, and I also got to sit next to him play against Chris Moneymaker. I got to talk to him, and it was really cool because if it wasn't for him winning the main event 20 years ago, who knows what this game would be like. Maybe I wouldn't be playing poker for a living. Maybe the game wouldn't be big enough for me to make YouTube videos about it. So it's pretty cool to sit next to and play next to a guy that has a lot to do with the fact that this game has grown so big that it is now. Daytona Beach, the staff, the live stream staff, the dealers, everyone that was helping out with the live stream did a really good job. Been on a lot of live streams and this one was just as good as all the rest of them. They were very good, very attentive, very professional, and it was a fun stream. Had a lot of fun. Of course, it doesn't hurt when you're running well and you're making full houses and you're making two pair and you're making hands and you're getting paid off. Obviously, that's good. Profited pretty good tonight. I'm gonna get some sleep. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be playing the Moneymaker Tour main event. It's a $1,500 buy-in. It's a big tournament, a lot of money for first place. Going to be playing that, going to be vlogging that, which will come out after this video, so be tuned for the, stay tuned for that. Hopefully it's a big one. I'm going to get some sleep. It's past 1 a.m. Got to get ready for tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, though. Please like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, I'll see ya.